Hello everyone, Rurikon here coming at you with another first impressions video and today we're going to be taking a look at Blackguards. My voice is still not all there, however I have been feeling quite better, so whatever. Either way, uh, we're going to be taking a look at Blackguards today. As you guys are most likely aware, I've been pretty excited about this particular title ever since I went to Gamescom because it was one of those titles that really um, struck me that it was going to be something that I was going to have a lot of fun with. Now, unfortunately, that hasn't really been the case up until this point. Uh, I mean, sure, it's a fun title, but I was expecting maybe a little bit more of it. The thing is, this title is still in early build, and I mean really, really early. If you guys look at the very bottom of the screen here, it's going to say development build. It doesn't even say alpha or beta or anything like that. It is available for early access, and Data Lake Entertainment did send me, send me a key. Uh, because they, I, I guess they knew that I was kind of excited about it, because uh, I told them in emails, like, I'm really excited about this title. Um, so I guess that I've kind of built up my, exci my excitement a little bit too much, and I came in expecting way too much. But either way, let's get into the title uh, before I kind of uh, already give you guys the first impressions without even showing you what the game looks like. Oh, I've messed up. Oops. This is not what I wanted to do. Uh, let me actually load up here. Yes, this is what we want. Okay, so welcome to Blackguards. So right now, we're actually in one of the cities in the game. And this is pretty much what it's going to look like whenever you come to a city. So you, as you can see, you have uh, an overview of the city as well as many of its NPCs and whatnot. Now, I'm not going to be clicking through all of these NPCs, but usually, if you would want to go and find yourself some uh, side quests, you would usually want to go and click through all of these NPCs. Now, all of these NPCs will do different services for you as well. Like, for instance, we have the innkeeper here. Uh, when you go to the innkeeper and you rest at the innkeeper, it actually allows you to rec recover all of your party's mana and um, hit points. However, it does not recover your party's wounds. So this title is based off of the Dark Eye rule set, for those of you who know it. It's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but in Germany. <laughs> but um, the Dark Eye is actually a pretty, um, is actually pretty big, a lot bigger than I knew it to be. I wasn't even aware of it. But um, this this title is set on that particular universe. So when you when I start talking about rule sets and whatnot, and wounds and all of that stuff, I'm going to assume has something to do. With dark eye rule set but if you look at my character over here Rurikon he's got this cut this is a wound on your character so it's going to give him some form of debuff I'm not exactly sure how you can even see what kind of debuffs I have right now but I, I know that you can actually do that um, before we start going too deep into stats or whatnot let's actually show some gameplay so you can talk to any of You'll the characters the in here weapons and armor in my shop as you can see, there's still a lot of placeholder stuff, like if you noticed when I clicked her, satisfied. that's placeholder obviously, so don't judge the game too harshly based on those placeholders, because like I said, the game is still in active development. Uh, and in fact, I believe that since it's been released, I think it was released last week, I'm sorry, because I've been sick uh, and it's kind of hard for me to even keep track of time, but um, Every three weeks after it's been released, they say they're going to add a new chapter to a grand total of five chapters. And in late January 2014, that is actually the official uh, release date for the whole game. But if you pre-purchase the early version, you're going to have access to all of that stuff that's going to come uh, later down the pipeline. Little sip of tea there to keep my throat a little bit uh, moist. <clears throat> so... Uh, like I said, you can talk to all these characters. The smith is obviously going to sell you weapons and armor. Healing the alchemist is going to send you potions. Poisons, I have it all. And um, other people provide other services. Now, uh, these two dwarves that you see here, they smuggled us into this city. I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about the story because the story is supposed to be one of the, the best parts about this title since you are going to actually be playing anti-heroes instead of the usual RPG. I'm going to be a hero guy and whatnot. Um, so in this title, it's actually a little bit different in that regards. Sir, we are going to be talking to the healer because, like I said, I do have a me. wound. So I'm going to heal um, only myself. The reason I'm going to heal only myself is because I'm also going to How go to the innkeeper and rent You'll the, room. Like the rooms. There we go. Thanks. And now my whole party is rested up and good to go. 
there's another merchant here if I wanted to buy more stuff, but I actually don't. Let me just double check my inventory and make sure everything is a-okay. So we got the cutlass on myself. We have uh, Norim's battle axe on Norim. So let's move onwards. Uh, we're here on this city to do a side quest for this particular character, Zurbaran. Now Zurbaran, if you guys remember the video that I did in regards to my very early impressions of watching the demo of uh, Blackguards, Zubran is the mage who is kind of like the guy who believes he's got a girl in every port, that kind of thing. So he wants to come to this city to uh, talk with uh, a girl that's here, uh, a baroness even. And that's what we're going to be doing. The art on the loading screens is really good. fairest rose, my baroness. She's a little on the thin side. But who's that with her? A bodyguard protects her day and night. I must be seen, or the whole city guard will be after us in an instant. Is there something you forgot to mention, perhaps? We have to get rid of him somehow, in a lawful fashion. Now, the voice acting, I actually was expecting it to be a little bit better, uh, but, I mean, it's not terrible, it's, it's pretty decent. But I, I wanted it to be a little bit better, especially because there's a dwarf involved, and you guys know that I'm kind of obsessed with dwarves and stuff like that, so I would really want to have a better uh, voice acting for that dwarf particularly. But still, it's not to say that the voice acting is not good. It's good. It's just I wanted it to be exceptional. Uh, so what else we got here? Uh, so this is the master gardener of this particular section. It's I've, I've already done this section of the game. Uh, the, the characters with this symbol on top of their head, what they actually it? teach you stuff. So like if I go, something. if I go over here and, and I go to teaching, he can probably teach us uh, talents. I believe is is it this thing that he can teach? I'm not sure. Switch characters. Yeah, he can teach this. I believe Warcraft. But obviously, I don't have any. Um, or is it spells even? No, spells is just for mages. Special abilities. That's what it is. He can probably teach. Fane and armor used to because I don't know of any other way to actually learn these things apart from going to a teacher and learning them um, so yeah he can teach this kind of stuff um, and then um, the, the girl that we want to talk to is that one the Baroness but there's a bodyguard here so first we're gonna do is we're gonna talk to the gardener curse those rats they're gonna devour all of the hanging gardens would you like us to slay them boy? with swords Nonsense. That's what traps are for. And the I knew where the critters have their nests. Let's place some traps in the park, shall we? We discovered a few rats' nests in the park. We can show you where to place your traps. Oh, there are still some kind souls left. I'll set the traps at once. Now you guys will understand why I set those traps, because I actually stumbled onto this. I, I, I didn't really do it for any particular reason, but uh, I stumbled onto this, and then I went to talk with the bodyguard over here. Stay back! We need a word with Signora Bellarita. In private. I'm sorry. Her uncle gave me explicit instructions to let no one near her. Isn't that taking things a little too far? Too far? Her husband was murdered but a month ago. Who can be sure his killers aren't still lurking about? All right. Hmm. I knew that there was a way to actually challenge him. What is it? My pleasure. Yes? The gardens are as fascinating as ever. Yes, it's a shame they're in such an awful state. At night, they're a lover's retreat. And by day, the young lads trample all the roses when they duel. Dueling is allowed in the park. Welcome to the Horasian Empire. Yeah, I guess that first you need to be informed that you can actually duel in the park. Stay back. Draw your weapon. What? You won't touch my sister a second time. You're... Amelia? But I thought... Excuses. Have you no honor? I challenge you to a duel. You question my honor. I do question your honor, good sir. Like I said, the art style. I, I like this this art that they put in between loading screens. 
Okay, so this is the actual combat portion of the game. Now, for starters, all the characters are lined up uh, down here by order of initiative, and this is the way that things are going to play out. So first, I get to play, then uh, my dwarf friend here gets to play, then this guy, then this guy, then my mage, and then this guy. So you can um, move through the battlefield. You can also use A, W, S, and D. Now, this battlefield is pretty much straightforward. Some of them are more complex. And as you can see, the reason why I placed the traps in the park here is because the traps are actually set on pretty much every single uh, place that they have to go through to get to me, which is pretty damn cool because they're just going to take extra damage by stepping on those traps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my uh, party on a defensive formation. So I'm just going to move over here and I'm going to wait because here's the thing. You can either commit... Like, you can move more than your like, than the distance that you're allowed to. Like, I could go all the way over to him, but I wouldn't be able to attack. So instead of going all the way over to him, I'm coming over here, and I'm going to wait. And once you wait, it actually lets you perform your attack in the end if someone is close to you by that time. And since usually um, the computer tends to be not too smart about that stuff, he is most likely going to come all the way to me, and then he's going to get bashed in the face. Now, our dwarf, we're going to move him all the way here. I doubt that the computer is going to get here. But if I move him here, because as you notice, the color changed. If I move him here, it's actually not going to allow me to attack the computer. So we're going to have the dwarf wait. That guy's going to move in. He gets chomped by the trap. This guy's going to move in. And he's going to stay there before entering trap range. And we can actually already take a pot shot at this guy if we move the mage. Because the mage obviously can cast some spells. So what we're going to do is, we have some spells set up in the hotbar here. You can set up multiple stuff on this hotbar if you so desire. I just set up the very uh, basic spells. So we're going to take a pot shot at this guy. Oh, we can't. It seems that we can't really. Aw, oh, that's a damn shame. Oh, we can take a pot shot at this guy though, so he's going to eat a fireball to the face. Or maybe not, because we'll fizzle. Oh well. Either way, we now get to actually smack this guy because, like I said, I waited with this character. So he's going to get to smack this guy in the face. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this off to make sure that these guys don't start running amok. So, so I didn't get to actually attack any of them, but I still can move. So I'm going to move over here. Oops. I didn't meant to do that, but... And now my character can also slap this guy about a little bit. Had I already attacked him? I'm not sure. Either way, uh, we, all, we can also do this thing, which is a power blow, which reduces our chance to hit, but increases the damage we make. Now, since I know about uh, d um, dragons, um, Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons rules, uh, I know that there is also um, a skill there that's called Power Attack, which does pretty much the same thing. Reduces uh, your hit die, but increases your damage die. Oh, I missed. That's terrible. Oh, I do get to smack this guy with a dwarf, though, so... Take a beating. That dwarf is such a beast. Yeah, that's it. Go ahead and activate all the traps now, why don't you? Uh, let's see. Let's actually move the mage down here for support. Actually, we can make a wall, if I remember correctly. Which is kind of cool. Uh, we should be able to make a wall here. Uh, where's the wall spell? Is this thing... And so this guy can't actually go through here now, which is cool. Uh, okay, let's try a power uh, blow once again. Get smacked in the face and die. And the dwarf misses now. He's coming. <laughs> he came all the way up and got hit by another trap. Man, you're just eating those traps like they're berries at this point. That's fine. Now we're going to move here, and we're going to bash him in the face with a fireball. Wow, he's still going. Okay, so let's see. It's actually the turn of this character now, but I'm going to wait because I want to play the dwarf first and see what happens with that. Okay, dwarf wins. This guy attacks me. That's fine. You're going to wait, and I'm going to bash you in the face. And I promised you I'd come back, and here I am. 
We can't stay here. My uncle has eyes and ears everywhere. Meet me at my country estate. A country estate? Sounds reasonable. And this is the loot that we got. We got some gammas and pants and some gammas on shoes. So I'll take all of that. You know, we could just leave him here. He'll be here soon enough. Oh, I'm sure he will. Oh, I don't know about you, but I don't trust that wizard any further than I can throw him. You can say that again. We should. I, I mean, it can't hurt if we leave now. What? My doves have flown over there. The bailiff. Go get them. So, take a wild guess what happened here. So we were waiting on the mage as he was visiting the Baroness, and obviously something went wrong. However, I'd like to take this time to talk a little bit about the cinematics as well. Now, if you guys noticed, uh, there was no lip syncing whatsoever. Now, this could be because the game is still in beta, or it could just be part of game design. Now, I'm hoping it still has to do with the beta and that they're actually going to do some better animations for those cinematic cutscenes because I would really like to see that uh, a lot more because as much as I like the combat system and the, the game itself, the cinematics are kind of putting me off at the moment. But once again, like I said, this is a very early version of the game so we can't take anything for granted. Now here's the thing. Oops, I just messed up. Um, we're going to have to move and we're going to have to wait until they get to us because that's going to give us the initiative. So I'm going to move the dwarf all the way. Actually, should I? I should move him just enough so that I can hide the mage behind us. Since they're chasing anyways, they're going to be coming to us. So we're actually going to make a, a formation here. Let's put the dwarf here and wait. This guy's gonna smack the mage. Missed. This guy's gonna shoot the mage in the face. This guy's gonna smack the mage. Missed. Wow. You guys can't hit the mage, which is my worst melee character. Jesus Christ. Okay, and now I'm going to go here. And the reason is because I want the mage to go through this hole, then we're going to close this gap. I don't think they can come through the fireplace. Dwarf is going to stay here. You are going to run here. Oh, crap. I thought that I was controlling the mage. My bad. Wow, that was a nice little snipe. Everybody just chasing after that mage. Now then. Oh, he, can, he still can't go as far as I would like. This is not good. I'll get your ass over here and hopefully we can protect you. We might just have to go out and meet them instead. Seems like a more reasonable strategy. Since the dwarf can already reach them anyways. You know how dwarves are. Just smack these fools. And now my character can't actually reach them. In which case, I'm gonna move here. Wait. Oh, the dwarf gets another swing? It's perfectly fine by me. And they're basically playing surround the dwarf. Now, we are going to move here. I think that dwarf is unfortunately going to have to suffer some damage. Because I'm going to do something crazy. Although, there's very low chance that this actually works. So, I don't really care. I'm trying to set up a shortcut here. Ah. 
So we're gonna try and cast a fireball right on top of the dwarf. So he's gonna take some damage, but he's gonna be fine if we actually land the damn thing. Of course we do. Why would we? We never land the fireball. I think I might have landed the fireball spell once. Oh, I can't reach them. Uh, okay, we need to... Damn it. I'm like one thing away of actually hitting somebody in the face. Oh, I can actually attack now, thank you. In that case... Power attack on this guy. And I need to get this dwarf out of here. These things are about to become really bad for him. Although, to be completely honest, who's lowest? You are? Uh, in that case... Damn it. Why is it only 55% for that guy? Must have a ton of decks. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna... Oh, really? You, you can do anything but heal the dwarf. That's very useful. Are you kidding me? You can't heal the damn dwarf. That's great. This is not looking good at all. And he can fizzle a goddamn fireball. My dwarf's gonna die. Well, the dwarf's gonna move, that's just it. How low is this guy? He's about to die. This guy's not even close to dying. Let's take a swing at the guy who's about to die and kill him! There we go. We're starting to look a little bit more balanced. So long as they don't aim for the mage, I should be able to heal the dwarf next. Holy crap, so much damage. Finally! Cast a single spell, you bastard! Mage fizzles so many spells it annoys me. Okay, now let's get uh, another power attack in here. That's right. Now, who else is low? I don't think anybody else is low. Except for my own party, that is. So let's smack this guy. I need to heal the dwarf again next turn. Wow, dwarf is pretty banged up. You, you actually fizzled an 80% chance to cast spell. You useless friggin' mage. And you guys wonder why I don't like magic. Stupid mage. Don't you fizzle some more, you bastard. The dwarf has two wounds, so his combat efficiency is becoming terribly effective. Why don't you fizzle again, you bastard? Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, he's coming at the mage. This is bad. I need to get rid of this guy instantly. Which is probably not going to happen. But I can try and drop aggro from him. Have that. Uh, 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 uh. Who are we going to swing at? So we got 70% here, 80% here, 55% if I switch to power blow. How much health does he have? 10. The only way he's going to die is with a power blow. And this guy is even lower. I hadn't even noticed that. Well, I'm going to have to risk it. Failed. Luck is not on my side today. Not on my voice either. Damn, I sound like a drunken old person. Okay, now then. What we're going to have to do is get the hell out of dodge. And I'm going to have to heal myself. Because they can really put the hurting on this mage, and this mage needs to survive. Oh, come on. Well, the dwarf's gonna have to go in and save the mage. Which is bad. So I'm gonna make a tactical retreat over here. Oh, wow, he's gonna be left alive with one hit point. That guy's dead. Okay, so the mage is currently kind of safer. Uh, let's see if we can heal the dwarf again. 86%. Just dare to fizzle that bastard. 
Okay, we're looking pretty decent now. The dwarf is at 33 hit points. It's looking a lot better. This is the guy with one hit point. Just a normal attack. Not even going to go with a power attack. Dwarf's going to go with power attack here. Nice little smackdown. Yes, indeed. And I guess the mageman gets to cast a fireball now. So. Uh, is it a good idea, though? I don't have line of sight. I have line of sight for a fireball. Well, let's wait. And use our turn at the very end. Oh, that's the only person who was... Who I was waiting for. In that case... The hell with it. I'm gonna go for the line of sight. Smack this guy with a fireball, because he needs some damage to be done to him. That's right. And this guy's what? Four hit points. Normal attack to the face. And now the mage. Another fireball. Good night, good sir. I got your little tough mage! Bella Rita. She's a baroness. You have no right. Keeping company with murderers makes you a murderer too. I'll burn out her eyes. And ensure that her lust never again makes her stray from the righteous path of Prios. What happened? What's the bailiff doing here? It's a long story. A good story, actually, but we don't have time. We must rescue Bella Rita. So did you enjoy your night, Mr. Zubaran? I hope you had an enjoyable night. Oh, almost as enjoyable as that night on the Black Orchid. A Minivatu slave girl lay on my left, and the captain's daughter on my right. Outside, a jealous Donna Anbright was clawing at the door. I would tell you more, but, well, you know. Well, let's go ahead and try to All rescue right. the Baroness. We'll rescue her. Are you sure, Biggin? He smells like a trap. Since when does that stop us? She's in trouble because of us, so we'll help her. Thank you. Once again, loot, action points, all that jazz. Uh, let's take everything, of course. Wow, a huge sledgehammer. Too bad I don't actually have a, a two-handed character, otherwise that would come in real use. Okay, so this is the world map. So at this point, you can go wherever you want. You don't have to go ahead and rescue the Baroness straight away. You can go and do something else, like do your main quest or whatever, because once again, this is a side quest. Or you can go back to a city and uh, you can rest up, which is actually what we're going to do. We're going to go to the city and we're going to uh, basically regroup. So let's look at our inventory here. Uh, we got a tricorn, which probably has more armor than the stuff we have on. All right. Not really, but it's going to look cooler, especially because I also have a cutlass. So might as well. Yar, I'm a pirate mighty. How about a pirate dwarf? You guys ever seen a pirate dwarf? Look at that. Not to mention it really brings out the beard. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, we only had two of them, so sorry, dude. You're out of luck. However, you are using uh, whatever this is. Metal table? I don't even know what that is, but you're going to be using some gambas and pants. Uh, this guy's also using metal table, but he's, he's good. He's good. So we got some throwing knives, we got Zuberon's staff, which, why is it not equipped? I think that the staff I had is better. 2-7, to seven, 6 attack, 7 parry, 5 initiative. This one has more parry and more initiative. And more damage. I don't know why I wouldn't equip Zuberon's staff instead, but we have now equipped it, so it's... All good and done. Uh, we also got some gladiator gloves. Do I have those already? Yep. How about dwarf? Dwarf has no gloves. Dwarf needs some gloves. Of course. Makes perfect sense to me. Uh, let's make some sails now. I can actually show you kind of how that works. Basically, you just drag and drop um, pretty much the same way that you do any in any other game. I'm going to actually keep the Mascaron staff because that was from a quest. So I'm going to sell this. We don't have any rogues, so we don't need any throwing knives to sell the shoes 
Uh, I like keeping torches because I never know if they're not going to be useful at some point because they do fire damage, so whatever. Uh, sledgehammer, I really don't have any use for it now, but who knows if I might not have in the future. So that's going to be the extent of the sails that we're going to be doing. Dwarf's pretty banged up, so we're going to heal him. Heal. Uh, only the dwarf, Norim. And, yep, everybody else is How actually going to stay at the inn, so... You like the rooms? There we go. And from here on out, we can actually then proceed and go do more stuff. But before we go and do that, let me show you guys. Uh, this is like the, the system of Dark Eye, which I'm not that familiar with. But basically, as you adventure throughout the game, instead of getting XP or experience points, you're going to get AP or adventure points. And those adventure points are going to allow you to invest in stuff like resistance to magic, which is the only thing I can actually do right now. But you can also invest in strength, which is going to affect pretty much everything in terms of melee combat, constitution, which is going to affect defense and your number of hit points, and so forth. All these other stats. Charisma, which will probably uh, lead to influencing the kind of conversations that you can have. Now, the good thing about this game that I'm noticing is that a lot of times... Um, Another character can speak for you. I've noticed that in several uh, dialogue options. Now, I'm not sure how much they flashed that out in terms of actually doing conversations and stuff like that. But um, I like the fact that it's there. Because let's say you can actually have a bard or like a bard-like class on your team. And the bard could do the speaking for you because bards usually tend to have higher levels of charisma. If, there is, if there's even like a bard-like class... For Dark Eye, which, like I've mentioned, I'm not sure there is. Um, but it's definitely good because usually most of these games will force your main character to have uh, that high level of charisma if you want uh, to have access to those conversations. So I like the fact that different characters give you different conversation options. That is definitely something that I enjoy in this game. Um, then there's also weapon talents, which you can also spend your uh, hit, uh, adventure points on. You can spend some money on axes and maces, fencing weapons, throwing weapons. These are basically passives. Uh, then there's talents. Talents are passive as well. Uh, there are several talents that you can put stuff in. Then there's spells. Spells are really, gonna only, to, um, are really only going to really only going to affect the mage uh, or mage-like characters that actually know how to do spells. And then there's special abilities, which is stuff like I've I've been doing power blow, for instance, with my main character. Uh, it looks like I can actually learn. Um, armor use and shield fighting um, but then there's also skills that you can only learn through uh, teachers like the one that we saw upstairs he could teach us faint so this is how you level up it is fairly complex in my opinion uh, and there's a lot of information to be absorbed um, th like I still don't master this system at all oh, oh yeah something I forgot once you actually learn a passive ability um, on a weapon you actually get to the side how many points you spend on defensive bonuses and offensive bonuses. Like, for instance, you see here, I have 10 points into Swords and Sabers. So I have 5 points spent towards defense and 5 points spent towards offense. But let's say I know that I'm going into a fight that I feel that I need more offense, I can go ahead and slide this uh, all the way to the sword, and it's going to give me 7 points offense and 3 points defense. Which is interesting. It's an interesting mechanic that I still haven't fully grasped, if I'm to be completely honest. But it is definitely interesting, and it is a lot... Um, it is very well fleshed out, I feel. At least at this point, with the very limited knowledge that I have of the game. Obviously, as you've seen, the game is also turn-based, so you, you always have time to figure out what you're going to be doing and whatnot. Uh, it also allows you to have... Um, I didn't change anything, so... Um, it also allows you to have um, multiple. Oops, it's not here. It also allows you to have multiple weapon sets if you so desire. Like for instance, I could switch to a weapon. This costs you one uh, one turn, I think, uh, to switch a, a weapon set. So, but it allows you to like switch between two different weapon sets if you so desire, which is cool because you know as we progress further, I'm pretty sure the game is going to eventually get uh, harder, and we're going to need to basically do different weapon sets like the dwarf can actually dual wield torches if I so desire <laughs> even though I haven't really figured out a use for that but it's there just in case I need it 
Um, what else? Yeah, this is pretty much it for the for the very first impressions when it comes down to this title. Um, I like it. I really do like it so far. I don't like it as much as I thought that I was going to like it, but who knows? Uh, it is still, like I said, it is still in development, so a lot of stuff could actually change. In terms of graphics, they're not going to blow your mind away, but they do their job. And we also have to remember something. This is being produced by Daedalic Entertainment, and this is a company which majorly uh, makes adventure point-and-click games. This is, I believe, probably their very first actual RPG. So I think that's kind of cool uh, that they're actually venturing out of their comfort zone and starting out an RPG because they're very good at storytelling. So I expect the story to also receive a lot of polishing up. At least I expect and I definitely hope so that they work up a little bit more on the story. Um, because so far the story hasn't really blown me away. Um, so I want to see more. Or I'll break her shapely neck! Crack! If we're fast enough, we can stop them before they kill Bellarita. And if we're not, then we'll return the favor. Try to save the Baroness by passing the second bridge within five combat turns. To win the battle, however, it is sufficient to kill Laska's henchmen. So this is actually something I haven't mentioned, and it's a good thing that uh, they're actually showing it now, which is um, some scenarios will have like a, a winning condition and a bonus condition. Like for instance, this one, in order to save her, we need to cross over here in five turns, which is actually pretty damn challenging, or the guy is going to kill the, um, the Baroness. So this might be problematic, but we're gonna try and get through it. So for starters, I'm gonna just run, oh damn it. I switched my weapon set and I forgot to switch it back. Good stuff, Rurikon, really good stuff. That's going to delay us, can I restart this? Ah, whatever. Either way, um, let's just run. Let's just make a run for it. What? There was a trap there? I didn't see it. Now, let's see if the mage can actually do something. Let's send a fireball here, here. Oh, the dwarf is in the way. God damn it. How about... I can't shoot anything, really. I can shoot this guy, maybe. Yep. Landed on his face. That's what he got. I got an arrow to the face. They're just basically trying to delay me as much as possible. Yeah, which is terrible. You guys are terrible. That's all I gotta say. Now then, let us switch weapon sets. So that character becomes useless for the rest of this turn. And let's put the dwarf over here. This is a force to be reckoned with. Break this box. And now I should be able to shoot the proper fireball here, which would be good. Please? Of course not. He always, always fizzles. Wow, three turns. I have to cross that bridge in three turns. Yeah, they're going to try to stop me. But, I'm going to make a run for it. Problem is, that's actually going to screw myself over more than anything else. So if I pass, the mage gets a turn, then everybody else gets a turn. The hell with it, I'm actually going to move here. And smack some of these guys. This guy's about to die. Eight damage. Why do you have to stay alive with one health? Okay, so now we need to kill one of these guys in order to get through. Okay, which one of them has probably least defense? 
Isn't? I thought I was able to see the percentage of hits. Well, I hope it's 100%. That's 8 damage. Well, the dwarf is definitely not going anywhere. Let's kill this guy. How's this guy's health? 14, 22. Fireball there. How many turns is it left now? Is it two or is it one? Please tell me it's two. I'm basically not gonna make it through here because I would need to basically kill someone and cross. And I can't even kill someone right now. The dwarf also isn't going to be able to help. I would have to cross, which means clean over. So the Baroness is going to die. That's a damn shame. Oh well. If she dies, she dies. I should have gotten two characters on this bridge to prevent them from stopping me. Oh wow, I wasn't even noticing my health. Baroness is dead, and that's what you get. Way to fail, Rurikon. And my main character is dead too, which means I'm probably going to die too. Uh, let's try to get the mage to resurrect my character, see if I can save this terrible situation. Smack down on that guy. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna reach him from over here, but let's try it. Yes, I can. Is he just gonna get sent down instantly? Ah, oh, he's a beast. He's gonna be in one hit point. And he's gonna miss. Great. I'm not even wounded. That's the interesting portion. Let's heal him back up again. And needs to stay alive. He's back to one hit point. Does not give up. That guy goes down. Heal him again. We're still in this. Blocked. Dodged. Actually parried, but still. Kind of the same thing. Take a smack down, you bastard. Let's move the dwarf in. We should have moved the dwarf in right at the start. And let's move this guy in here as well. Again, heal the main. Fizzle. Blocked. Blocked. Dodged. What a beast. What a beast I am. And I'm a pirate too, so. Hey dude, how's hanging? You ever took a smack down from a dwarf? Really? Shooting at a dwarf? That's desperate. I wish I could just run up to that guy and bitch slap him. But... There. Mage will do that for me. Oh, I actually can't reach there. But I can set this box on fire. Fizzle. Okay, you're gonna keep running? Is that your plan? I could move more. It's fine. I'll just wait there. Why can't I move more? I don't get it. Maybe I can hit him now? Yep. Have that. And shooting arrows at me the whole damn game.
and that's that. But the chick is dead. The Baroness, she did not survive. So let's see what happens. Oh, that's it. The quest just ends. <laughs> Either way, that's going to be it for this particular video, ladies and gentlemen. Should give you a pretty good idea about what Blackguards is all about. I still like Blackguards quite a bit. Not liking it as much as I thought that I was going to. Mostly because I thought the history was going to be um, a little bit more fleshed out. I mean, sure, the history is fine so far. It's not bad in any way. It's just like I said, I think I got myself overhyped for the title. This is definitely a solid title, but it is also not for everyone because not everyone enjoys the turn-based combat RPGs. I do. So I'm liking it. I'm enjoying it a lot so far. I recommend if you enjoyed any of this footage, more than likely you're going to enjoy this game as well. So I recommend the game if you enjoy turn-based RPGs. And if you enjoy the Dark Eye universe, probably you're going to enjoy it as well. Um, and yeah, this has been Rurikon. As per usual, leave me your comments, feedback, all that kinds of good stuff in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next.